Okay, hello guys. So to start off with, we are just moving into a drawing assessment that we're going to be doing. Um, please do have a look through the PowerPoint if you're just starting off today. Um, we are going to be dra look, drawing skulls, but there is a little bit of information there about the history of skull art that I would really like us all to look through. Um, we're going to start off today just prepping our pages for our drawing, just so that they look a little bit like this. Um, if you've looked at the PowerPoint, you would have seen some Leonardo da Vinci inspired images. Um, and that's what we're going to be working towards today. So we're trying to make a little bit of an aged page to work with our Leonardo da Vinci style. And to do that, all you're going to need is some coffee of any kind. Um, you can use tea as well. Coffee does work a little bit better for the pigment. Um, you're also going to need a little jar of water, just like that, and a brush. OK, that's all you should need. Um, obviously, if you don't have coffee, but you do have watercolours, you can absolutely use watercolours. Just make sure you make yourself this kind of sepia brown colour. You're going to want to use a kind of burnt umber colour or a burnt sienna, some kind of browns, maybe mix with a little bit of a goldy tone to get that goldish aged paper look. Um, and obviously we're going to need some paper as well. So I'm going to open up my sketchbook. Um, we are going to be doing two A4 pages at the same time today. So you will need two pieces of paper or a double page in your book like this. So first thing we want to do, we want to prep our first page to have, we can see just in the edge here, six boxes i want these six boxes to fill the page um so we do want to do that now with your coffee what i would do one spoonful of coffee in a mug and pour a little bit of water into it hot water or cold water hot water technically works a little bit better to melt it all down um so just like you would make a cup of tea or coffee boil the kettle let it cool down a bit pour it in now i had a tiny bit of coffee left in this jar here so i've just poured a little bit of water straight into that to get my color and make sure you mix it up um, get yourself quite a dark colour, so don't put loads and loads of water into it. You can see how much I have there. Uh, I say for a spoonful of coffee, you only need a little bit of water. We want quite a dark tone to start off with, and that's why we also have the jar of water. So starting off with my coffee, I'm going to start marking out my six boxes. Now, if you want to sketch out six boxes, you can first of all, but don't stress too much about it. Okay, I'm going to start planning out for a start my boxes one there I'm leaving a little bit of the room at the top for potentially a little bit of a title but you don't have to do that if you don't want to so I'm going to start off just planning out my boxes sketch them out don't panic if they're not all absolutely perfect just make sure they're generally a kind of square shape There we go, six boxes and I've left a bit of space at the top maybe for a title. Always thinking about good presentation. There we go, six boxes. Now the reason I have the water um, is because we want to make this look a little bit more textured and changed like that. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to these boxes. I'm just going to kind of drip it on, not puddles and puddles of it, but enough to get the water moving around a little bit. And as you've had water already, you can see in this one, it's just starting to move the coffee around. A couple of little drips, a couple of little dots. It will just add some pattern into your coffee texture, like dripped water. Once I've done that, I'm probably going to add a tiny bit more coffee in places, build up a couple more layers so that I get some variations of tone anywhere you want and then just to finish that off and keep that down I'm also going to take a tiny bit and I'll prop my page up like that I'm going to take a tiny bit of dry coffee still dry I'm going to take the smallest pinch of dry coffee I'm going to crush it in my hand so it's a really fine powder I've just squished it so it's a really fine powder I'm just going to just dot it around really fine a bit of powder a very very small amount okay not a lot at all and what will happen because the page is wet at the moment that will slowly start mixing in to the water and give us a little bit of extra texture in there which will make it a little bit more interesting and you can just see from the start that that's just a little bit more visually appealing than maybe the first one now before we can't do any drawing on that we are going to have to let that dry so we're going to move on to the next page while we're letting that do its thing and it's exactly the same thing again but this time on it over the whole page i do want it to again have a little bit of texture and pattern just like that you know that's a little bit different to a flat design so same thing as before a combination of the coffee over the page and the water okay so mix it up a bit of water on the brush get the page nice and wet a bit of coffee okay vary it up 
And again, we're not going neat. We're not going neat, bit of water. We just want to make sure that it's not a completely flat, plain boring page. There we go, good start. I'm gonna get a bit more. We are gonna put it on a little bit lavishly. We are generously applying our coffee. It is gonna take quite a while to dry, so make sure you have somewhere safe to pop this while it dries. If you're using very, very thin paper, it can get quite crinkly. So do try and use a bit of good quality paper if you've got hold of it, if you've got an option. There we go. Now, same thing again. We can see already that there's a lovely variation there of some dark and light areas. Same thing again, taking some of my dry coffee, a tiny little bit in my fingers, crushing it up and just dotting it around in a few places. You don't have to spread it evenly, have little patches. And you can see how that's reacting with the water straight away and giving us a lovely dark tonal areas. It will do more as you leave it. Okay, so let's have a bit of texture. I'm gonna come back in with a little bit of water, do a little few little drips of water. There we go. If you feel like you've put too much water on, don't be afraid to just get yourself a little bit of tissue and blot away if you're getting massive puddles forming. You can obviously leave them for quite a while to dry and they will look quite interesting when they're dry. But if you're not happy, then you can get rid of those. When I just splattered a few little bits of water there, it does create that little bit of texture in there. It is worth adding those extra little details. So this is our prepped page. I would love you, if you're ready, to have a go at doing this today. So the next lesson we can move on to some drawing. Okay, once you've done this, if you want to move on, have a little look at the presentation. If you want to move on to starting to practice some of the small images that we're going to be working on to these here, that would be great um, to start developing your technique. But there will be another video where we start discussing technique of doing these drawings.